Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do a time lapse of this bowl of rainbow sherbet. And if you would like to paint this with me live, I have a free class. Yes, that's free, zero dollars, over at michaels.com on July 14th. So I will have a link in the video description so you can sign up and join us for that. And there will be a replay after. So it's pretty easy. If you just go up there, you can sign in as a guest. If you are outside of the United States, you just need to put a 10 digit number in there for the phone number. That's all, you will get an email email confirmation as soon as you sign up and then you will get a, um, a notification with a link about 24 hours before the class. So it's very easy. You just follow the prompts in your email and you'll be able to find it. I've also provided a pattern for this project so you can transfer that onto your watercolor paper before we begin and uh, before class obviously so we can do the painting all in the class time. I am using some pastel paints from Derwent. I am also using using a set of 12 ink tense pencils. I wanted to keep the supply list pretty small so that if you didn't have these products, you wouldn't have a lot to buy. Obviously, you can use any watercolor paper, any pastel watercolors, and any water soluble pencils you have. The ink tense pencils are very vibrant and they work really well with the pastel watercolors to get this uh, you know, beautiful shaded effect. You can also use whatever watercolor brushes you have. I would recommend a golden taclon pointy round. You'll need like a... Um, Oh, like a, a number two, a number six, and a number eight, somewhere in that ballpark. Doesn't have to be exact, but um, you know, that's pretty much it. I'm using the Derwent Ink Tense watercolor paper that's 100% cotton, but if you have a different watercolor paper on hand, that's gonna be totally fine. Just uh, use what you have. I do recommend that you tape down your paper because it will, um, it'll prevent buckling. So if you come to class with your the pattern drawn or transferred onto your paper, and it taped down onto a painting board, you're gonna be ready to roll. So uh, that's that's how we're gonna be able to paint this in an hour. And I might actually um, switch around the order of how I do some of the things in the live stream, but this will give you a good idea of kind of what we're gonna be doing. Like I think I'll do the background first when we do our class together because I think it will just save a little bit of time. Also, if you have a hair dryer handy uh, or a heat tool handy, it would be nice to have that with you for class and that way you can speed up any drying time that you need to. But uh, with the, the pastel watercolors, these are the Derwent pastel watercolors, but any pastel watercolors really, they tend to be a less uh, mobile paint. So they do tend to uh, bleed less and stay put. So um, drying between colors isn't a huge deal if you don't have a hair dryer handy or anything. Um, but this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed designing this. And I'll talk a little bit about the designing process because um, we'll go, we'll do the whole uh, tutorial real time live. But uh, when I'm designing something, it takes me so much longer to paint it because I'm trying to figure out, okay, what will be best this? Like, how do I wanna, what colors do I wanna use? Um, I used a, actually I used a compass to draw the bowl to get that, that like bowl shape. And I wanted it to be clear glass and I wanted like the ice cream pressed up against the glass in certain parts because I wanted to have the difference in texture between the melty smooth ice cream and the kind of, um, you know, almost cakey texture of like the scooped ice cream. So I like that contrast of, of textures there. Um, I wanted to add something to the pastel paint so that it would have a little bit more value range because you, when you have a pastel set of paints, you are working in kind of like that mid to light value range. And I wanted something that was a little more saturated and darker. So that's why I thought bringing in the small set of ink tense pencils would be really handy. Now, something I wanna mention to you about sets of products, because in a previous class that we did, Michaels has started to put like a shoppable list in the, um, in the class page and I had a lot of different options that you could try for the last class. So the last class you could have used ink tense blocks, ink tense pencils, or ink tense um, pan paints. You could use any of those. You didn't need all of them, but you could use any of them. And so because it had all these options listed, it was like a crazy looking supply list. So I don't want anyone to be discouraged if they see a supply list for any of my Michaels classes that I do and it's like, well, I can't afford all those supplies. You can honestly use what you have. And I encourage you to do so because you're gonna get to know your supplies a lot better. And the nice thing about like the, the Inktense pencils, the smallest so the smallest sets contain the most useful colors. And as the sets get bigger, the colors get a little bit more subtle and a little bit um, like nice to have, but not absolutely necessary. So 
I kind of like how Derwent does that with their sets, that the smaller sets will contain your essential colors, and as the sets get bigger, they just kind of have more of those, um, oh, kind of like um, adjacent colors, like just a little bit different, a little, a little, you know, a blue that's a little bit more green, or a red that's a little bit more purple, you know, it has those kind of more subtle colors, but you can really do a lot with those smaller sets. Uh, I'm using the ink black to get my darkest value. And when I'm using a limited supply, oftentimes I will bring in a black and a white. Um, if I was using the full box, I probably would have, I probably wouldn't have gone in with a, with a straight black. But if you use just a little bit of it and blend it out, you can really get those subtle grays and those effects that you want. But I did want to get some pretty um, strong refractions of light in there and some, you know, those, uh, those, those darker colors. I think it does kind of give it a bit of a cartoony look, but honestly, I like that. And when I was designing this, I basically went online and I just searched for photos of Rainbow Sherbert. And I probably went between 20 different photos of Rainbow Sherbert. A lot of them were like advertisements for the like sale, selling the, the Sherbert or the flavorings and things like that. Um, I couldn't find a dish that I liked. So I just did like a very simple semicircle. And then I just looked at different glass dishes with ice cream in them to see how the ice cream looked melted against the edge. And just to see kind of how the, how the light played and how the glass reflected the light and the shadow. And that's how I designed this. So I think it's kind of fun because it's definitely my style. It's rather than um, copying like a reference photo to the letter, being able to put so many different things together, it definitely ends up being more my style. And um, if you are struggling to find your style as an artist, try, uh, think of something that you want to draw and then just start drawing it and use a lot of different reference images for when you need, like, like need cherries. Okay, go find some cherries. Don't try to find like a bowl of ice cream with cherries perfectly the way you want it. Try to find, um, the different elements that are exactly what's in your mind's eye. And then as you start to sketch it out, then you'll see that, that, that drawings like that will be more of your style. My style is very, um, bright and shiny and a little bit, poppy, a little bit cartoony, um, a little bit, it's just kind of, it's kind of a happy, cheerful style. I think sometimes it has a little bit of a retro vintage kitsch to it, but, um, but yeah, the, I find that when I really have to work and, and go through tons and tons of reference images and go out and take my own reference images and, and rely on my imagination, especially when I have to rely on my memory and imagination, then I get the artwork that is really in my style. And I think you would find the same if you are struggling to find your style, working from your imagination, maybe starting with a reference image and then putting it away and finishing it from your mind would be would really help you get that uh, get that style. And it was chilly when I was filming this, so I had a robe on. Actually, it was chilly in my studio, but it was hot outside. So um, I had like shorts and a tank top on, so I threw on my uh, my house coat so I'd be warm enough in my studio. But one of the, the pitfalls of having a basement studio. Like the spoon here, I mean, I didn't have a spoon in an ice cream reference photo, so I just kind of winged it and it was fine. You know, it, the more that you try to draw from your imagination and you, um, force yourself to kind of figure out, okay, where's the light hitting? How dark would that be? Uh, that's when your style is going to come through. Now, one thing I didn't really like on this is that I have the ice cream spoon stuck right in the middle of the scoop of ice cream. I kind of think it would be better if it was tucked behind the ice cream maybe, but you can change it up when you're doing yours. It's completely fine. The pattern is pretty basic and you should be able to find that right on the listing page. You should be able to download that right away. And what I like to do is use a product called graphite transfer paper, and you can buy a sheet of that at any art supply store and it will last you an age. You can use it hundreds of times before you throw it away and get a new sheet. Um, you just kind of, you know, it just, it's basically like wax paper with a layer of graphite on it. And so what you do is you tape your pattern to your watercolor paper, and then you put the graphite transfer paper dark side down between your pattern and the paper. So the dark side of the, of the graphite paper is touching the watercolor paper and then you just draw over the pattern and I recommend using a contrasting colored pencil like your pattern is going to be black lines I would use like a red colored pencil to trace it so you can see where you've been and you don't end up with double lines because um, you don't really want especially the lines that are around the ice cream you don't really want that to be too dark because they might show through on the, even though the pastel colors have a little bit of opacity the Derwent pastel 
watercolors really are more sheer than other pastel watercolors. They're not like chalky. So you will see those lines through if they're dark. Something you can do though, if you transfer it and you're like, oh, my lines are way too dark, take a kneaded eraser. Those are the kind that feel kind of like clay. Take a kneaded eraser and just roll it over your painting, uh, over your drawing, the, the transfer drawing, and that will remove some of the lines so that it's not going to uh, show through after you paint it. You just want it dark enough that you can paint and that's about it. I sometimes will go a little bit darker when I'm demonstrating just to make sure it shows up on camera because cameras will tend to mute out those pencil marks, uh, but you don't need to have it that dark for your work. You just need it to be dark enough to see it. And if you're having a trouble seeing it with it being light, go dark, that's totally fine. It's totally up to you. Another thing that would have looked really cute with this painting, and it's up to you if you want to do this, but I think this would actually look really cute with fine lining. Like if I, if you went over everything when you were done with the black pen, I think that would also look very cute. But I decided not to because, um, I, I was I was really liking the way it was. I felt like everything was defined well enough. And uh, so I just decided to leave it the way it is. But if you like a pen and ink look, I would definitely do my pen work last because even though the pastel watercolors are more transparent than a lot of pastel watercolors, you're still gonna see some of that haze on a pen, uh, like a pen and ink line. So I would do that after. Plus that if you like move any edges or you decide to add any embellishments or anything like that, then you can just put your lines where you actually want to have those edges. So I tend to do my, if I'm freehanding um, or if I'm doing marker, alcohol marker, I, I will do my line work last because I don't really know. I'm pushing lines around. I'm like uh, affecting things. I am changing my mind. So I don't want those, those committed dark black lines until the end. Now at the end here, I'm adding texture to the ice cream and I'm doing that with the pencil and then just kind of tapping it with a small round brush so I can keep that kind of like, um, that pocky texture of the ice cream, that kind of almost like crumbly texture. You know what I mean? It's kind of like how cake has that crumbly texture. That's kind of the texture that you get where, where a sherbet or an ice cream has been scooped. You've got that um, rough texture versus the smooth texture of the ice cream melted up against the glass. So I'm put, going in and putting in that texture anywhere that I don't have the melty sherbet. I think this is really fun. Um, I love to throw in lots of colors. I love to have colorful artwork. It makes me happy to see it. And I keep talking about one day doing a calendar of um, of paintings and it would all be like food art, like a calendar you'd hang in your kitchen or maybe even pull apart at the end of the year and frame the pieces for like kitchen art, kitschy kitchen art. And I think this would definitely be a calendar contender. So um, let me know in the comments below if you'd be interested in a calendar of kitschy kitchen art and maybe I will make that happen. I have quite a stack of paintings that I could use. I don't know if I have 12 yet, but uh, they've got to be the right, you know, the right proportion and uh, whatnot. I Every once in a while I'll do a painting, I'm like, oh, this would make a great calendar theme, like fruit crate labels or, you know, rainbow foods or whatever. I don't know. Sometimes I just come up with a painting. I'm like, yeah, that would be a good calendar one. And it's usually the ones that I'm um, doing from like many, many reference photos and I'm doing it a lot more out of imagination. And I think that's probably why it's like, if I was going to do a calendar of artwork, I would definitely want to make it something a little bit more me than just kind of copying um, like somebody else's photo. You know what I mean? So this was a lot of fun. I absolutely had a ball painting this and I really hope you do too during the live stream. I'm wondering, and there I did have a line showing through from the graphite and I used an electric pencil eraser for, um, for removing that and that worked pretty well. And there are lots of different brands of electric pencil erasers. I have one from uh, Jerry's Autorama called Quick Fix. Um, it was cheap. It was like five bucks. I bought it on sale. Uh, it had a lot of refills with it and that works great. I know Derwent also has um, either one or two different electric erasers and I think they have a fine tip or a blunt tip. So that might be a little bit more useful, but if you already have one, then I'm sure that's going to work just fine. Now with the pencils, you can go in and add any darker value colors or any more saturated colors you want. You can even go in on the wet watercolor paint if you don't want quite as much texture and you wanna have a lot of color payout. That works out really well. Um, and basically I'm going back and forth. I'm like, uh, adding color into the melty parts if I don't feel like it's quite right. Remember, if it's melty ice cream area, that color is going to be blended. And also you might have a little bit of a shadow next to where that melty ice cream is touching the glass. And uh, you just wanna make sure you have more definition and probably darker colors on the ice cream itself and the melty part will be a little bit lighter 
So just, just make sure you get some of those contrasts in there. Now in the live stream, you might not be able to finish all that like texturizing of all the ice cream in the one hour time, but um, it's the same, it's the same technique over and over again. And you can always come back to this video if you want to see that um, in a little bit more detail. You can always slow it down using the gear icon that is in the, um, this on the corner of the YouTube player. And you might want to mute me because if you slow me down on YouTube, I will sound drunk, but I'll be talking at probably at a normal pace, but it's just kind of a weird thing. I'll just have a really deep voice, I guess. Um, but yeah, you could be, be sure to refer back to this if you if you don't get it, if we don't get a chance to texture every single piece in class. I think I probably will be able to do that, but, um, um, but if for whatever reason, you, or you can't see the detail or whatever, come back to this video. I know sometimes recorded or quite frequently, there was a Zoom update about a year ago. And even before that, recorded Zoom lessons are not as crisp as the live Zoom lessons and not as crisp as like high definition YouTube videos. So um, just to give you a heads up. Now, one thing I added to my pastel set is I put a Derwent white, uh, antique white block in my set and I'm using that for the highlights. You can use white gouache. Um, you can use a white paint pen or a white gel pen. It's completely up to you for those really bright highlights, whatever you have. You could use white acrylic paint even because you're doing that as a last step and you're not going to paint over it. So it's totally fine to use some white acrylic paint for that. I'm a big, big believer in using what you have because um, it gets you to know your supplies more often and not feel ashamed for owning them. Now I am using some of the ink black um, for the shadow under the, the occlusion shadow, the shadow that's touching the objects here. I think that works so good because it's so sheer. The ink tense pencil, I mean, the ink black. And you can actually mix it with some of the gray from the pastel set if you were the blue, the kind of grayed blue color if you want to soften it a bit, but it does make it a little bit more opaque. But I find that the pastel watercolors are very easy to use. In fact, one of my favorite combinations is to take the Derwent pastel watercolors and mix them with my Cotman watercolors. They just work so well together for some reason. I think the sheerness of the Cotman just works really well. It just kind of tempers them out a little bit. Um, these pastel watercolors, if you're curious about what they're like, the Derwent pastel watercolors are very similar to the Derwent ink tents and you can layer them up quite a bit. Now you could scrub these out a bit and I think that's why they're not part of the ink tents line, but texture wise, they feel so much like the ink tents. They are thirsty like the ink, ten ink tents paints and they layer up nicely. So if you've had pastel watercolors in the past and you struggle because they keep lifting up on you, give these a try. I, they're not that expensive. There's only 12 colors in one set and, uh, and I think you'll find that they work pretty well for you. So now I'm just going in with a Uniball Signo white gel pen. It's my favorite white gel pen and just adding any super skinny highlights that I want. You can even stipple it on the ice cream for a little bit more glistening texture if you want to. Totally up to you. Take your time and uh, finish it however you like. But um, this is how I'm, I'm doing mine. I tend to like to make things extra glossy. That's part of my style. I know this should be on a Trapper Keeper, don't you think? Remember those Trapper Keepers back from the day, back in the day? I would totally buy a Trapper Keeper with this on it. I think they still make them too. Maybe I need to talk to the Trapper Keeper people, see if I can, uh, see if I can get a gig. <laughs> But, uh, but this pretty much does it. I loved doing this. And if you would love to paint this along with me live, make sure to sign up for the free, absolutely free Michael's class linked in the video description happening on July 14th. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.